me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Sing that on the second now. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me. That's good, sing out. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Amen. Sing it on the third now. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. That's good singing. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Amen. Good singing. Thank you very much. Good to be here this evening. And if you're glad you're here, let's holler a big amen right there. Good to see everybody out this evening. We're going to talk a little bit and pray and uh, get right into the to the message today. This evening, I want to make you welcome. If you're visiting with us this evening, make yourself at home. And a uh, lot to be thankful for. A lot. Isn't it a blessing to come to church on Wednesday night and at daylight? So, oh, I love it. I love that. I, that's a blessing. And uh, what a joy it is to be able to come to church. Um, we're going to pray right quick here this evening and move along pretty quick. Uh, talk about some things coming up and um, uh, have our prayer request and talk about the real special events coming up. Uh, you've got a lot of special big days real soon. Our next Youth service will be two weeks from Sunday night, the 29th, on Sunday night, the last Sunday night in the month, and that'll be the last one for the youth rally, and it is it is here, y'all. It is on us. I actually went to the fairground yesterday evening for a meeting that they had with the board of directors or whoever it was, and uh, got a little bit of information, and uh, uh, y'all pray about it, that everything will work out good. They've changed leadership, I guess you could say, got a new president, and uh, changing a lot of things, new bylaws, everything. So let's pray about that. The devil would love to throw a cog in that. And uh, if 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 uh, people keep going wild about the coronavirus, they may even forbid, forbid us from having it. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I do want to mention to you that, Lord willing, Lord, don't change my mind, I'm going to be preaching a special message on the coronavirus this Sunday morning, and it's lead to the mark of the beast. And you may think that's way far fetched, but you come tell all your friends, preacher, you're going to preach on the coronavirus. We're all going to die uh, uh, Sunday morning. No, don't tell them that. Uh, but I'm only telling about uh, how what is going on in Bible prophecies. I'm not not a doctor and don't claim to be. I listen to them, uh, but I, I'm a preacher. And that's what I'll be talking about Sunday morning if the Lord don't change my mind. And uh, we'll be talking about the effects of this thing and uh, prophetic events that's coming. You know, you do, you do realize that little things that like happen like this are steps moving the world toward a, a time when the government can just take over everything. And um, or the, or the dictator, a dictator, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And there's going to be sores and bowls and disease in the tribulation that uh, that's unbelievable. And so we may see it before. 
a lot uh, before then. So anyway, I'll be dealing with that Sunday morning. Bring a crowd with you. Tell everybody where. Guess what? My preacher's going to preach on the coronavirus. You don't want to miss it. And so we'll um, we'll do that Sunday morning if the Lord don't change my mind, and He might. So uh, let's pray about that. And then let's remember um, our buses. We're going visiting Saturday morning. Uh, Saturday morning at nine thirty. Come praying. We did have some good help this past Sunday, Saturday, but we definitely definitely need more so come pray and bring somebody with you to visit saturday and we're excited about it looking forward to it we're going house to house like i preached and then one other thing um i thought i covered the whole subject sunday night fasting but i didn't I, i've left out a few things we are in our 40-day fast for the youth rally there are people fasting right now have been since monday every day until april 17th if you didn't get a day, you wasn't here, you want to pick your day, pick out whatever day of the week you'll fast. Uh, people have asked me all kinds of things about, is it right to drink this, or right to drink orange juice, some of that, that's between you and the Lord. You do whatever the Lord tells you to. How long? Between you and the Lord. And um, uh, take vitamins. I take vitamins when I'm fasting. Um, uh, I don't, you know, if you're on medication or whatever you have to take. And um, uh, something else I didn't mention the other night about uh I forgot what it was. But anyway, uh, use common sense and follow the Lord, and he'll bless you for it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and pray tonight. Let's remember those that are sick. Uh, Brother Wayne's had a terrible time. Uh, he's supposed to be, he's going to be mentioning the men's prayer meeting, uh, you know, Sunday, and he he's not able to get out. All you men that are not signed up, we're having men's prayer meeting this Saturday evening. And is there anybody that would, would say, we don't need to pray. Would you raise your hand, please? I'll throw a song back at you if you raise your hand. Uh, and, uh, we, Lord knows we need to pray. And men, the Bible says men ought always to pray. So we're going to have a big dinner, 5 o'clock, chicken, uh, green beans, potato salad, uh, bread, rolls, dessert, drinks, all the trimmings at 5 o'clock. It's all free for men and boys. And uh, then we'll pray at six. So if you're not signed up, put your name on this list here so they're going to know how much chicken to buy. And it's going to be good. The meal's always really good. And we, we meet back there and have a meal. And then, we, uh, then we, we pray in here for a while. Pray for our kids. Pray for our families, our, our, our homes, our marriages, our churches, our country, the world. And uh, men ought to pray. That'll be Saturday evening, 5 o'clock food, 6 o'clock uh, the, uh, the prayer meet. okay? And uh, so let's remember, pray for Miss Dot. Also remember Miss Gail. Uh, Gail's had a real rough time lately. She had to go to get a CT uh, scan today, and she's having still a rough time with her back. And uh, remember her in prayer this evening. Uh, let's pray for others that have uh, sent him special prayer requests. Um, Corey, my daughter, keep praying for her. And uh, she's maybe a little better. She's got to go back to Asheville tomorrow to the doctor and uh, ask the Lord to bless her. She can only stay up maybe 30, 45 minutes at a time without laying down. And that's not like her. So uh, let's pray for her and others. All right. Anybody else? Uh, you want to mention something about an uplifted hand? Let's do that right now. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening, we thank you for the privilege of coming to church tonight. We ask you that you would have mercy upon us and forgive us of all of our sin. Everything we've said, everything we've done, anything wrong in our hearts and lives, we ask forgiveness. Wash us in the blood of Jesus right now. We ask you, Lord, this evening that you would bless this service. Do with us what ought to be done. I pray the Holy Ghost of God will come down and do a great and mighty work here tonight. I ask you, Lord, that you bless those that are sick not able to be here. Those we've mentioned, uh, Mrs. Gale, Lord, I pray that you touch her and let her be all right. Brother Wayne, Ms. Dot, Corey, others, Lord, that, that, that have been sick and one thing or another, I pray that you'd move in their hearts and lives and minds and bodies and give them peace and victory. I pray for every person here tonight, Lord, that you'd watch over them and bless them and take care of them. I pray, Lord, that you'd move in every life. I pray for our prayer meeting Friday, uh, Saturday night, Lord, that you'd bless it. Move in power, Lord. Save souls. Change lives here Sunday morning, Sunday night. May the power of God come down in this church. Get us ready for the youth rally. Lord, don't let the devil stop it, hinder it, fight it. 
rebuke him, keep him away from it, Lord. Help us to live for you and serve you and do right. Have your way in our hearts tonight. Bless the service. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. All righty. Okay. All right. Now, remember all these announcements. Men, if you are not signed up, boys, uh, get your name on the list. We're going to have a little time of fellowship. Kids, you are not dismissed yet. Hang on for a few minutes. The big kids, uh, teenagers staying in here again tonight, and the little kids will be dismissed. Your class in just a minute. Let's all stand and turn around and be friendly. Friendly, friendly. Friendly, 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 friendly. Friendly, friendly, friendly.
Amen. Let's just remain standing for our offering tonight. Everybody, everybody just remain standing, please. And let's give honor the Lord this evening. Amen. Let's remember those that are uh, traveling, Carrie, they're all carrying Todd and all of them. They're uh, watching right now, I'm assuming. They're out in Texas. And then uh, oh, Jeremy, people like that had to work. Would love to be here if they could. Uh, ask the Lord to bless them. Uh, let's just all get a blessing here tonight and honor the Lord. Give like you're supposed to, and he'll bless you for it. Heavenly Father, I pray you bless this offering tonight. Let it be just what you want it to be, and we love you. And have mercy on us, God. Multiply this and get in this service tonight. Do a work in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, when they get back there, kids, you can go ahead, little kids. Bibles open now. Let's everybody get your Bibles open this evening. We're going to the book of Deuteronomy again, and uh, we're going. We've been we've been looking at some things here the past couple of Sunday uh, Wednesday nights, and we're going to uh, finish it up tonight. But I'm going to illustrate it tonight and tell you why, and and let you see the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy come up to date in front of your very eyes. That's a Deuteronomy. Let's see. Chapter 18, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, that's 5, uh, do 5, 18. We're going to talk about the occult, and every every person in here tonight needs this, or all the kids, I want the older kids in here, uh, older kids in here tonight, okay? They don't need to be hanging around with the little kids back there like some weirdo. Uh, get in here where we're supposed to be. Um, um, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Am I right? Deuteronomy 18. And then we're going to read this scripture again, and I'm going to illustrate it for you uh, by just a little short video here in just a minute. So um, continue to pray uh, about our, our youth rally. I'm asking folks to plan to give a special youth rally offering here in the next few weeks. It's a very, 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 very expensive time, and uh, we're hitting that here in the next few weeks, so continue to pray about that. All right, Deuteronomy 18. He told these people, Verse 10, there shall not be found among you, nobody in here, among God's people, anyone that makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Stop. They had a God named Moloch. It was a huge God. Had his hands out like this. Had a cow, like an a, 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 a ox head with horns, like the golden calf they worshipped in the, in the Old Testament. Picture of the devil. Satan, that's a picture of Satan, a cow, that, that hoof, them split hoof, that's they call the devil old slew foot. And he, they, it was horns, and they would sacrifice their children to that God. They would literally take babies and burn them so that that God would show them favor. Now, to us, that sounds terrible. People still do stuff like that in the mind we're living in. Or... People do worse or as bad, and you know what that is. Uh, and uh, so uh, don't, don't give up your children to the world, basically what they're saying. Now, let's look at the rest of them. There's a list here. Or that useth divination. Look at that word, divination. That means seeking knowledge of the future to foresee, looking in a crystal ball, Ouija board, a Ouija board is, is of the devil, and it's satanic powers, witchcraft. Or an observer of times, we got into that a lot last time, about astrology, your horoscope, none of that stuff is of God. I know people say, oh, I'm going to look at the newspaper, and, and I was born on a certain time, and, and see, what, see what my 
Good luck to them. That's all a bunch of junk. God, the Holy Ghost, wrote the Bible. And if you need any instruction on what to do, you get it from Him. You get it from the Bible and the Holy Ghost, not from some palm reader. Uh, there's, I told you, there's one down there in Florida, and every time I preach down there, I, I want to stop in there and give that woman a track, and I chickened out so far. And they sit in there, and they sit at this desk, you know. It's got this big old palm outside, about that big. See, on that psychic readings, and, and you go in there, and she's got a thing, or thing on her head, and she sits there like this, and for so much money, they'll, they'll take your palm, and read it. Hmm. 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 Ooh. That means you're going to have good fortune. That's where I had a bicycle wreck, sister. Oh, they go by, <laughs> they go by them lines, how they meet and how they, how they come together like that. You know what that is? That's a bunch of bull. That's what that is. And if you've seen one that said something right, it's still a bunch of bull. Anybody can get it right once in a while. I can get up here tonight and say, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the future. Bad things are going to happen. Well, of course. Uh, watch this. I will, I will now prophesy. Somebody in here has got back problems. Somebody in here has got back problems. Anybody? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pass the Kentucky Fried Chicken Buckets. Let, let's take up another. See, that's a bunch of junk. That ain't God. God ain't a bunch of junk like that. Now, the Lord can tell the future, and the Holy Ghost can tell the future, and the Bible does tell the future, but you don't get it from astrology, and you don't get it from horoscopes, and you don't get it from fortune cookies at the Chinese restaurant. Uh, and, you know, everybody's like, oh, oh, look what man says. You're going to find true love. Whatever. What do you, what do you think it's going to say? You're going to get your heart broke tomorrow and, and die in a car wreck? No. Uh, now, that happens. People do get their heart broke and die in a car wreck. Why don't it say that? I bet you could read every fortune cookie in Burke County and none of them would say, you're going to break your neck next month. But somebody is. This boy just got killed over here jumping motorcycles like Doc Dax does just in Burke County just three days ago. Y'all heard about that. Uh, it was That's a sad situation. Only 20-something years old. They did the same thing they've been, uh, that he's doing in Texas right now. And it happens. It happens. But they never say nothing good. You will find true love. A recent investment will soon pay off to your, just throw that in the trash and get your Bible and pray and say, Lord, would you lead me? And would you let me know what I should do and follow the Holy Ghost? And then it says an enchanter, that word luck, you know where that word luck come from? L-U-C, Lucifer, brother. That's akin to the devil. And then yoga, meditation, hypnotizing, uh, mantras. You know, they used to do them things where they'd swing it in front of somebody's eyes. And you'd look at it like this. And, you know, you're getting very sleepy. You're getting very sleepy. And then first thing you know, you just go out. And they'd say, what happened to you when you was four years old on the 12th of March? My daddy spanked me. <laughs> you know, so, I don't know, just something like that. And, and you saw kind of stupid stuff like that. I think that. God's not in a bunch of junk like that. Casting a spell on rabbit's foot. One guy said, I knew I'd have good luck. I got my lucky rabbit's foot right here. And the guy said, well, it didn't do the rabbit no good. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, he wasn't too lucky, was he? Got his leg chopped off. But And then a witch, a witch. You see that scripture there? The last part of verse 10, witch or charmer or consulter with familiar spirits or wizard, necromancer. All that do these things. Look at verse 12. If you fool around with a cult, if you try to tell somebody's fortune, if you're trying to be all cool and especially Ouija boards and witchcraft and movies that, about witches, all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. All right? So a witch practices magic. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how up-to-date this is here tonight. I'm going to show you how up-to-date uh, uh, what what we've been studying about. Keep in mind, a charmer uh, is somebody who claims to cast a spell on somebody. Uh, you ever you ever seen people do that? Cast a spell. Do you know there's a movie come out? I'm gonna show it to you here in a minute. Um, way back years ago, and I forgot the name. It's about these four little old witches that was real witches in real life, but 
uh, they in the craft, the craft. And I figure probably you teenagers have probably watched that movie. You shouldn't have, but you probably did. And most of you adults. And it was about these girls that were trying to get in touch with the devil and get power from, from the devil. And they got it. And, um, uh, make sure my blue mic's on please. And, uh, these girls, these girls, uh, were chanting and they were consulting with spirits and what the devil has done. Let me tell you what the devil's done. The devil has took this stuff that I've been preaching about and made it mainstream America normal. Now you're going to sit there tonight and you're going to say, Oh, well, that just shows, but you know, you know what television does? It indoctrinates people. They, they shape our thinking, like it, believe it or not, like it or not. They, they tell you how to think. And if you're not an individual and a strong mental person and got the Lord and the Holy Ghost, you'll just go right along with the world. You'll just fall around. And brother, you ought to thank God that you've got the Holy Ghost inside you and you've got a King James Bible and you've got a, a preacher and a church and friends and good Christian literature to make us think right. Because the whole world out there this morning, this evening, thinks this stuff I'm going to show you is normal. And I'm going to read it again now. An enchanter, a witch, a charmer, an observer of times, a divination, casting spells. These girls in these movies now, they say, oh, I like that guy. I like that guy. That's, I want him to fall in love with me. So here's what they do. They go and, and do a witch's coven and sit around in a circle and chant and ask the, whatever they're asking to make that boy like him. And the next day he comes in and he goes, oh, I'm in love with you. I get, he just melts under that power. Now, if you're ugly, you'd, that'd really be appealing to you. I mean, you think, hey, man, I get, I get me a good looking woman uh, or a man like that. I mean, that, uh, if, if you're, if you think, well, I can't get no boyfriend, no girlfriend, no other way. I'll I'll put the mojo on them, uh, you know, the hex or something. And that ain't right, y'all. That ain't right. And you say, I'll just pray the Lord. Lord, make him like me. And the Lord ain't going to make him like you. You probably, you probably ought to shout that he don't. You probably ought to shout that she don't uh, Most in most cases. But anyway, uh, that's what we're talking about here a little bit tonight. Good luck. Uh, uh, rolling dice. Anything like that. Anything like that trying to, like when people roll dice, they go, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Who are you? Who are you talking to? Can they hear you? You're talking to something. Talking to a familiar spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Throw him dice out there. Yeah. And I've heard people even say, you can't beat him in cards. He's too lucky. He might have a little help from somewhere. He might. He might. Only cards mom would let us play was an old maid when we was growing up. We'd say whoever draws the old maid, we played that. <laughs> you know, we'd. He sees draw the old maid, would stick the old maid way up there above all the other cards, uh, you know. So they would draw it, and uh, and we did that. But she wouldn't let us fool with them regular playing cards. Wouldn't let them in the house, and uh, they were they were connected with some kind of uh, astrology and some of that stuff. I don't know, but that's what they said. Anyway, uh, let's let's go on this just a minute. Go ahead, Drew, and uh, get a little get me lights down, and let's just see how mainstream Deuteronomy. 3,000 years ago is up to date on your television right now. Watch. President. You all right, Frank? So we're here in Brooklyn where a group of pagan witches... Hold on. Something, my blue mic on. Doing the same thing it did in that other video presentation. It was perfect a while ago for church. ...to place a hex on the newly confirmed Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. One article says that the witch population has doubled in the decade as millennials cast off Christianity. New York Post says... So why has witch popularity doubled? Perhaps it's because millennials were raised on Harry Potter. Or maybe it's because of the rise in popularity of yoga and meditation, researchers suggest. Regardless, millennials have embraced astrology and the supernatural, even if they aren't quite sure why. In fact, Stella Bugby, editor-in-chief and president of The Cut, 
told The Atlantic that their horoscope content traffic increased 150% from 2016 to 2017. Whoa, whoa. Horoscope readers increased 100 and something percent in one year. I tend to agree to the old saying, life imitates art. It's not hard to see that the masses follow pop culture trends that appear on the American idols of Hollywood. Even in my own life, when I started searching for truth, I was drawn to witchcraft. The craft was one of my... There's that movie I was talking about a minute ago. Now, I want you parents to pay a very close attention to this. See what your kids are seeing and being indoctrinated to think that the occult is cool and harmless and normal. You know, and I know a lot of people say, well, there's thousands of people, watch that brother Danny, and they didn't become witches. That, that's true. I understand that. There's thousands of people drink a, take a drink of liquor and never become an alcoholic, but there's thousands that never get out of it. Thousands that never get out. There's always some weak, vulnerable teenager that takes it seriously. And that's who the devil's after. Favorite movies in high school, which probably had a big influence on my interest in Wicca. The movie is based on four high school hotties that start dabbling in the craft and make it look like lots of fun. Changing the color of their eyes and hair, turning red lights green, and levitating off the... They said old uh, Prince did that. Would levitate off the ground like that. And it's a call on some kind of power. Now, I can promise you the Holy Ghost... It's not in that. I can promise you. It's got nothing to do with God. You're fooling with familiar spirits. That's what the occult is. Floor. Of course, this is only one of hundreds of movies and shows that glamorize sorcery. <laughs> Looking back now, I can see the paganism seed was being planted all throughout my life growing up. Cartoons like G-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And Captain Planet are laced with components of magic, sorcery, and calling upon the elements. Uh, uh, wind, water, hot, go, play. Now, there's what they're calling on. You might not can understand them. The elements, air, spirit, water, fire, and earth. That five-pointed pentagram. The inverted pentagram. Like, you can see the five-point. That's where Stevie Nicks stands, that Fleetwood Mac singer. And when they want power to come up from beneath somewhere. And these girls got together and chanted spirit, air, water, earth, and fire. That's what they believe is God. When they say that, they're not talking about the God of the Bible. They're not talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. They're talking about the elements, water, earth, fire, air, and spirit. And the Bible said they'd worship the creation more than the creator who is blessed forever. That's another thing is chanting. Now look at these kids' cartoons teach you witchcraft. Fire! Fire! Earth! Air! It's Witch! Premiering Saturday, January 28th at 3.30, 2.30 Central on Disney Channel. Good old Disney. Teach your kids how to be a witch. Your heart will lead the way to what we can control. Now, you'd never know that. Just If your kid's in there watching that, you'd never know that's what they're saying. You just think it's a kid's song. We can control. Ain't that something? Guardians unite. The guardians unite. The guardians is, is, is the upper higher beings, the, the uh, watchers, the, the demonic forces. That's watching over the yeah, the prince of power of the air. Earth, wind, water, fire, and air. On Scooby Doo. What's this? Turn into a witch. Only three others share this secret. Our friends, the sorceress. Our friend, the sorceress. Now, you want to put a cartoon on there saying, hear the story of John the Baptist came preaching about Jesus Christ. It'll never happen. You know why? The devil 
is in control of the, the media for the, main, for the main part and your TV stations. The devil, it ain't neutral. You're, back in the 80s, you'll see in a minute, there was a few shows like Little House on the Prairie, uh, and them other shows about heaven. I mean, they was, they was weak, but at least they taught that there was a God and, and that he loved you. But not nowadays, buddy. It, it, God's out. Jesus is out. It's earth, water, wind, fire, witches, sorceress, demon, conquer the universe by the guardian. It's no wonder that this last year's pagan pride fest held in Nashville had an attendance of 1,501 practicing pagans, which was quite a jump from the last year's attendance. So there's been shows in the past that glamorize witchcraft, but there's also been shows like Little House on the Prairie, Highway to Heaven, Touched by an Angel, and Seventh Heaven, so it's not like there's only one side being pushed here. Heaven's gone. Them's gone. The only time you see stuff like that, old reruns on channels that hardly nobody watches. You'll never see them on mainstream no more. The, the, the witchcraft has replaced the Holy Bible. Well, which direction has Hollywood gone since the 80s and 90s? It seems that shows containing magic have continually increased while Christianity portrayed in movies and shows have continually decreased or worse, blatantly mocked and ridiculed. So is it really shocking that American millennials are rejecting Christianity while embracing the way of the witch? Not really. Life imitates art. <laughs> So not only is the world being seduced by sorcery, but also the Christian church. There are major Christian ministries today who are selling what they call angel boards. And hey, there's some angel boards for Christians. I'll guarantee you them ain't angels if you get in touch with, if it is anybody. You ever fool with a Ouija board? I did when I was, before I got saved. My, somebody brought one to my house. My sisters had it, and we were sitting there, and, and we was asking it questions. And I've told you that, I, I, you know, da, 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 and I said, "All right, you're doing that." And they said, "No, I'm not. I thought she's doing it. She thought I was doing it. I don't know to this day." And I said, uh, "When am I going to die?" Twenty-seven. How am I going to die? M O motorcycle. What I said, and I was about fourteen. I said, mate, remind me never to get on a motorcycle when I'm 27. <laughs> I'll fool that thing. Well, guess what? It was lying. It was, now it might have happened if I hadn't got saved. I got saved. And you can't put that curse on a saved person. That's right with the Lord. And, uh, but that angel board, can you believe that? Are we so impressed and jealous of the world that we have to copy them everything that they do? It shouldn't be that way. We ought not to be so envious of the world that we try to act like them, look like them, dress like them, talk like them, go to the same place, listen to the same music. We ought to be a difference than a Christian in this world. Lord in mercy, don't lower yourself to this world to make them think you imitate them. They are a Ouija board. So, so just a rebranded Ouija board. It's called it's a Ouija an angel board, board, and they call it an angel board where you can talk to your angels. Typically, New Age will say spirit guides. You ain't, there ain't nowhere in the Bible where it said you talk to an angel. You ain't supposed to talk to no angels. But the terminology doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. There are there are tarot cards. They won't call them tarot cards. They'll use a different names. But there there are tarot cards that are being sold through major Christian industries right now. Those are just the extremes. It's creeping in in more subtle ways that, as Steve said, it absolutely is infiltrating our churches and it's stealing our children. Valerie Love is a self-professed Christian witch, the author of 14 books, all of which have four or five star ratings on Amazon. The Listen, she is a Christian witch, author in books, and thousands of people follow her. That's where this, that's Aleister Crowley philosophy, do what thou wilt, do your own thing. You're your own boss. Don't let nobody tell you what to do. You do what you want to do. That's where this philosophy leads. Listen to this testimony. Clearly condemns sorcery and witchcraft as a sin, but Valerie tries to justify it to her audience. I am Kaisi, divine midwife of soul destiny, Christian witch, and the author of 14 books on practical spirituality. How you loving? Listen. I was still, I was prayerful, I was meditative about what I am about to share with you. How you loving? Okay. She's character. She has prayerful and meditative and prayed about what she is getting ready to share with you. She said these church ladies come up to her and says, you can't be a Christian and a witch, a Christian and a witch. And listen to her answer. Uh, we have the church 
church ladies that come in, you can't be no Christian and no witch. No, 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 no. We got the Christian witches like, look, we can be Christians, Christians and witches if we feel like it. we can be anything we want. Amen. Let the church say amen. Who is ready? Let the church say amen. Well, let the church say, no, you're full of the devil. How about that? To move on to bigger and better things as being a Christian witch rather than can you be a Christian and a witch? Can you be a Christian and a witch? Can you be a Christian and a witch? You can't be a Christian and a witch. She's doing a good job being a witch. <laughs> I'm telling you. you I... Stop. Here's the short answer. The short answer is yes. The and, long answer is no. And why? Because you can be anything you want to be. You can be anything. Look at my words, people. You can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. No, you can't. You cannot be a Christian witch. Any more than you can be a Christian murderer, a Christian devil worshiper, or a good devil. It don't, them two things contradict. That's the generation you and I are living in. You can be anything and still be a Christian. She's not alone in professing to be a Christian witch either. Also, approximately 500,000 men and women are members of the Order of the Eastern Star. Just look at their official logo. Masonic Lodge. Typical to the pagan witchcraft symbol. Look at their star and look at the pa pagan star. Exact same colors and everything. You have an inverted pentagram with the same exact colors in the same exact positions. Paganism and witchcraft seems to have infiltrated America at its core. Even the map of Washington, D.C. is in the shape of a pentagram. Disney is well known for spreading. Yeah, how many of y'all already knew that? Raise your hand. Well, I've heard that years and years and years ago. They designed it. That's why it's so hard to drive around up there in D.C. Them roads go at angles. You can't tell where you're at. Listen to this. Their message of follow your heart. I have to try this my way. Maybe it's time to start following your heart. You can be anything you want to be. Uh, no, you can't. Honey. Hiding the witchcraft. Listen, follow your heart is some of the worst advice anybody ever gave you. Let me tell you what the Bible said. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked, and you can't know it'll trick you. I don't. I can't follow my heart. I don't trust it. And I don't trust yours. I, you, you follow the word of God. If you don't, you get in trouble. The Bible said the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can't follow your heart, you nut. You know, that'll get you in more trouble than you'll ever get out of. Anymore, They're using the identical language such as the guardians of the watchtowers. But one of their newest and probably the most blatant glamorizing of witchcraft is the show Descendants. Sure, these witches are supposed to be the bad guys, but they're also the ones that look the coolest and the most fun. They're actually walking around on a See, they they portray these witches coming in this school, and they're, th they're all cool and make everything wonderful, and everybody loves them, and the Christians are nerds. That's indoctrination. That's teaching kids that, that you are... A nerd if you're a Christian and your cool, the cool kids are witches. Campus talking about how fun it is to be wicked. And just look at the students. They look boring. But whenever the witches come around, things seem to light up and become exciting. See how that's indoctrination? You see that? You sit there and watch that? You know, it's got to the point where you can, you got to be careful what you let your kids watch, even cartoons. Um, and, and you better be. You can say I'm old fashioned, say I'm crazy. Check me out by the Bible and see if I'm right or wrong. If they're going against this book and then the cult is wrong. Can you see why so much of our youth is gravitating towards witchcraft? Yeah. My favorite, if anyone knows my favorite, it's now. So for Halloween, I'm going to be here. This is where you used to need to see. But all who taste it now join in. <laughs> Teaching them little girls to be witches. Just look at the way Christianity is portrayed in the media. That's the way they portray Christians. The old crazy church woman here and the demon possessed a pastor with horns and, and fangs. That's why they portray Christians. Yeah, they're either really geeky and boring. Daddy says dice are wicked. We just move one space at a time. It's less fun that way. Completely annoying. Look how them people think got four fingers. Ain't that something? You know who has four fingers? Animals, aliens. Or worse, against everything. Where are we? This is Cohort Brian. 
is going into another far advanced universe and look how wonderful life is. And he said, that's how life would be on earth if it wasn't for Christianity. Listen. Yeah, same time. But in this universe, Christianity never existed, which means the dark ages of scientific repression never occurred. And thus humanity is a thousand years more advanced. The dark ages of Christian repression never occurred. That wasn't Christian oppression. That was a Catholic church ruling the world. The dark ages was. That wasn't Christianity. You see, the world equates Christianity with Catholic. When the world talks about church, they mean Catholic. When the world talks about a man of God, they're talking about the Pope. That's why it's so messed up. Can we honestly say that this shift has happened organically with zero influence by the media? I don't think so. Let's just be honest here. Witchcraft is a religion. Witchcraft and its more modern incarnation, Wicca, are pagan religions. Can you even imagine what the ACLU would do if every movie and TV show you've ever seen that glamorized witchcraft was actually glorifying God and Christianity? Somewhere oh, have a heart attack. where it's offensive to have a cross or a Ten Commandments monument in a public place, but it's completely acceptable and unquestionable to promote witchcraft to kids. There was a time when Christians were looked at as trustworthy and at worst a goody two-shoes. But over time, now Christians are listed as a hate group on the... They're on that website, Christianity is listed as a hate group. Poverty Law Center website. So it's pretty ironic when groups are marching in the streets. Well, there's a doll. Acceptance, yet they want you to tear down your crosses and Ten Commandments. Like just tolerance and love and acceptance. Isaiah 50. Tolerance and love and acceptance. Yeah, let's, let's go in there and preach on hell right there and see how tolerant he is. If, if, he, if he wasn't a hypocrite, he would say, you have every right to preach on hell, sir. You have every right. I don't like you. You don't like me. You have a right not to like us and our lifestyle. You think that would happen? No. They'd have you arrested. The people who are preach tolerance all the time are the most intolerant people on earth. The people who talk about hypocrites all the time are the most hypocritical. Watch it. 3.6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. People have a herd-like mentality, and we like fitting in with the majority. If a People have a herd-like mentality and like fitting in with the majority. We'll talk about the coronavirus Sunday morning. Uh, they put up a, line, a sign said the line starts here for no reason at all. And look at the people they got in line. Well-known celebrity wears a product or endorses it, suddenly everyone else wants that product. And remember, as you're watching these pictures, this is all over shit. That's going in to get tennis shoes that just came out. The media hops people up. I got to have them. I got to have them. I got to have them. Over tennis shoes. How many pairs of Air Jordans do you have? I have about nine pairs of Air Jordans, but it does not matter about those. It matters about these right here. This was the licking the bottom of them thing. What a nut. He said, I have nine pairs of Air Jordans. And it don't matter about them. What matters is these. Listen, buddy, you got to be, you got to be about half cracked in the head. I ain't going to even get on that. I, there ain't no such thing as a pair of tennis shoes worth $200 or $500. There ain't no such thing as that. You can't jump a bit higher. I won't help you. But you can get them for, for, I get mine. I pay $39 for mine at the outlet store. When we go to Pigeon Forge and sometimes have paid as much as 59 and they're just as good. In Kansas City, where people were sprinting through the halls. But that's nothing compared to the small in the Seattle area where people use pepper spray to break up a crowd that was pushing and shoving. Being a Christian goes against the grain. Jesus says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth. Just following each other. And few there be that find it. <laughs> we look to their behavior to figure out what the best thing is. Because if they're doing it, it's probably pretty good for us. Just followed along, started dancing, joining in. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's That's weird, man. So he got in the line. <laughs> Remember, these people are happy to do all of these ridiculous things for no other reason 
because the person in front of them is also doing these trends really shouldn't shock us because they're signs of the times that the bible compares to the days of noah and lot apollo's been casting spells since he got hooked on harry potter what's more shocking is that even the top 20 secular shows regularly watched by christians include how to get away with murder at number three and that's the top shows watched by christians that's how bad we messed up, man. Know about homicide, sex, conspiracy, and betrayal, and those are the tame episodes. How to Get Away with Murder is a breakaway hit here on ABC. And First John one five through seven says, "God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all." Amen. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Amen. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all It's wrote right. He didn't quote it right, but it's wrote in their right. life and are gravitating towards witchcraft because it promises spiritual power and is glamorized by the mainstream media. In these last days, we should be taking special effort in reaching out to these people and showing them what true Christianity is all about. Amen. Let's help the world see that these false representations of Christians are wrong by being shining lights in this dark world. Well, how'd we get in there? I want to talk about this time. All right, Ruth, give me light. All right, that's all I'm going to show you on that. That was this little fellow, our little testimony here. And it, what I really want to show you that is because that puts in light everything we've been talking about here. Everything we've been talking about, you see up there. We say, what about kids, people sacrificing their kids to Moloch? They're just about doing that today, just letting the world have them. You take your kid and just set it out and say, go where you want, do what you want. Uh, it's just, that's a big mistake. Big mistake. And um, tonight, I'm going to go over these things again. We'll take just a second, and then we'll go. Observer of times. Um, you're not supposed to look into a crystal ball. You're not supposed to uh, go to have your palm read. I don't, I don't, if, has anybody in here ever had your palm read? Did I ask that last one? Anybody in here ever had that done? You're smarter than that, I reckon. You, Chanel, where was it? New York? So what'd you do? Just curiosity? Oh, that's right. You told Do you have to pay for it? I'm sure. They're not going to do it for free, that's for sure. Anybody else ever had that done? Who's messed with the Ouija board? Raise your hand, please. That's about half of us in here. Anybody? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. An enchanter, yoga. I'll tell you how all this stuff got started. Um, there's nothing wrong with exercising, but the meditating leads into wrong stuff. The Beatles started stuff here in America, and they they brought this Eastern meditation and religion over to America and made it mainstream among the kids, and now the whole country's gone crazy over stuff like that. that they're the, one of the main players in it. Yes, ma'am? I got a neighbor. It's one. Oh, I'm just kidding. It's a warlock if it's a man, right? So the witch if it's a woman. This, for real? I think that's something. Anybody else want to make a comment right quick or a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 True. That's true. Right. Well, there's all kind of uh, stuff like uh, uh, you was talking about the, the Eastern Star, all kind of people that believe all kind of weird stuff like that. And that's why you read your Bible and go by it. Um, 
Coach T over there was telling me that about some funeral they went to and had a had a boy that was supposed to was baptized when he was three months old or something like that. And that supposedly secured him a place in heaven. And that now he's in heaven, but he's not happy or something like that. You told me one. He was grieving in heaven over his sins or something. That ain't right. You don't grieve in heaven. Well, there'll be some regret at the judgment seat of Christ. But once you're in heaven, there's no grieving. God will wipe away the tears from our eyes to judgment. Then it's all over but to shouting. It's like uh, if somebody comes in your room and your grandma died a year ago and somebody comes in your room and starts saying, everything's all right. It's me. I promise you that ain't your grandma. And these people on TV that that say, I'll give you a reading. And and I seen one. Who's that guy used to come on TV a long time ago? He, there's women sitting in the audience. And he said, now, now, there's somebody right up here. Your grandmother just passed away. Somebody right up here. Your grandmother just passed away, right? And that woman's, oh, it's me. How do you know? And and he took that woman for everything she had. I mean, they said, uh, well, I've got a reading from her. I've got a reading from her. And she said, a, it's a green dress, a green dress, a green dress. Oh, yes. We bought her a green dress. For her last birthday. Well, she said to tell you that she really liked it. Listen, buddy. You know what? Somebody starts talking like that. You plead the blood of Jesus and head for the first door. God ain't in that. Yeah. Yeah, they sure are. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely do. Right. Right. Amen. All right. We're going to we're going to stop right here. Time's up. Uh we're going to I hope that you've been enlightened a little bit for this and that you'll catch pick up on stuff like this that's going on uh at work. If any I mean this this goes on down to to play in the slot machine at the convenience store, to gambling, putting your money gambling, Las Vegas, the whole thing whole thing christian has no business gambling games of of chance and 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 saying well i'll i'll put a little bit more money in there put a little bit more money in because i won one last week you know you'll they don't build them big casinos oh on people winning money <laughs> that's for losers that's losers money all right let's all stand and we'll be dismissed don't forget to come visit with us saturday um saturday saturday morning and the men it, this is a final list right here. If you're not on the list, uh, we're fixing food for all the men. It's free. Be here Friday night, come in a, a Saturday night, be in a prayerful spirit and come ready to pray for a little while. We won't stay long. We'll start praying at six, pray a little while. And you can still go back home and be with your family and get ready for Sunday. Okay. All right. Let's be dismissed. Word of prayer. Everybody fellowship. But before you go tonight, uh, brother Mike, why don't you dismiss us?